Hello everyone, this is Sam Spade, and welcome to another tutorial in the Coding Fundamentals in GML 2.3 update. In this tutorial, we're gonna be talking about script functions. Script functions are named functions. So hopefully you've watched the last tutorial on writing your own functions. In that tutorial, we talked about named functions. Named functions in GameMaker Studio 2.3 are called script functions. They are global in scope, sort of, which means that if you create a script function anywhere, GameMaker will recognize it as a script function everywhere. But there are some important caveats to this, which I'll talk about in a moment. The next important thing to know about script functions is that they're assigned a script index, and that index is a number. So if you were to check the type of a script function, GameMaker would tell you that it's a number. Now, where should you create script functions? Well, you can create them anywhere, but if you create them inside of a script asset, they will behave exactly like the built-in or runtime functions in GameMaker. So the functions that come with GameMaker. You can also create them inside of an instance. If you do so, they will only work inside of that instance, sort of. Actually, there's a lot more to talk about here, and I'll have another tutorial on it down the road, but in order to really understand why this is the case, we have to cover a bunch of other topics. What I would say at the moment is just don't create script functions inside of an instance. You should always create script functions inside of a script asset. So where do script functions run? So script functions run inside of the instance that calls them. And this means that they have access to all of the instance variable of the instance that's calling them, which is incredibly helpful. It means that you can write functions that assume that certain variables will exist. And you can include those variables inside of the script function. But you have to be careful because you can run these functions anywhere. You can run them from inside any instance. So if you use a variable inside of a function, and then you call that function from inside of an instance that doesn't have that variable, the function will go looking for that variable, it won't find it, and it will crash your program. So this is something to keep in mind. Using instance variables inside of a script is incredibly valuable and very helpful, but you just need to remember when you do that and be careful where you call those functions. And of course, script functions have access to global variables just like everything else, and any local variables declared inside of the script function, the script will have access to. So here we have a couple example script functions. Print hello, we saw in the last tutorial. And then print, we saw in the last tutorial as well. So you should be familiar with those. But here we have another function, add value to my variable. Well, we're gonna add a value, and that's gonna be something that we pass in as an argument, to a variable called my variable. But you'll notice something interesting here. We're not using the return statement. We're not returning anything from this function. And this works because script functions have access to instance variables. So my variable is gonna be an instance variable in this case, and this function is going to add a number directly to that variable. Let's actually just switch over to GameMaker Studio and see this in action. So here we go. We have print hello, print, just like before, and add value to my variable where you can see that we are taking in an argument named value, and we are going to add that value to a variable called my variable. Now, all of this code is inside of a script asset. You can see right here, function basics. So this is a script asset, and all of these functions are inside of that script asset. This code right here is inside of an object, object function basics. And this object, or an instance of this object, once we run GameMaker, is what's going to have the variable my variable. So this is going to be an instance variable. It's gonna be a variable at the scope of this instance. We're gonna call print hello, we're gonna call print start test, and then we're going to add a value to my variable, but note that we're not returning anything. And the reason for that is this function is going to act directly upon this variable. And we'll print my variable just to demonstrate that. Let's actually run this in the debugger. So here we are in the debugger. We can initialize my variable. We can see it here and over here. We can do print hello, we can step into that function. We can see that we have come over to this function right here, show message, hello world. And indeed, here we have hello world. We can now come to print start tests. We will come into this function. And we can see now that our message variable, which is the argument, says start tests. We can see that represented down here in the debugger as a local variable. So now show message, we'll call start tests. Here we go, start tests. And now we can run the function add value to my variable. We'll pass in 20 as the argument. So here we go, we're inside the function add value to my variable. You can see that value is now equal to 20. That's the argument that we passed in. But this function is running from inside of our instance. And so my variable right here is the variable that's located over here. It's the my variable of this instance. And we can directly add 20 to that value. There you go. Now my variable is equal to 20. 
And note that this is true even though we didn't return anything. So we can print this value just as before, passing in 20 as the argument, show message 20, here we go. And that's the end of our tests. So in summary, script functions are named functions. You should create them inside of a script asset. Any instance can call them and they operate in the scope of the instance that calls them. And this allows you to do some very useful things. As always, the links in this slide will be below along with links to the slides themselves and the source code. And that's it. Thanks for watching.